sorry, there's like pistachio shells. <sighs> And it ruined my nails too. Now I know not to get shelled pistachios. Alrighty, so the next topic, the Arabic language test for the Foreign Service, all right? And this is different from the language test they give you for the Consular Fellows Program, all right? So I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Let's just start from where we left off. After the oral assessment, after passing the oral assessment, you have the option to take a language test to get some extra points to kind of boost your score for the register. And so for those of you who are kind of not familiar with foreign service lingo or whatever, the register is like, how do I even explain that? When you pass the OAs, you have a score. You need at least a 5.25, I believe, to, to be passing, to be on the register, right? So you get this conditional offer when you get the 5.25 or higher and that's basically, it's an important number because it kind of determines how soon you'll get called off the register. So if you have like a 6.1 as opposed to a 5.8, well, the 6.1s get called off, they get job offers earlier, right? And you can only be on the register, I think, for 18 months or 24 months. So higher score is always better, all right? And how can you get a higher score after your orals? You can take a language test or you can be a veteran. I don't know how many veterans points you can get, but for languages, you can do one test, which is a speaking test, about 30 minutes, and if you pass that, you get like an extra 0 0.17, which doesn't seem like a lot, 0.17, that's not even like a quarter of a point, I know, but it kind of means a lot, so it can mean a lot, <laughs> depending on what your score is, so for me, I had passed both the orals for the Consular Fellows and the IMS, Information Management Specialist, and even though I'd already tested for Arabic for Consular Fellows, that test score, that passing score does not apply to the IMS or to the FSO if you're in that track as well. You have to do another language test. I don't think it really makes sense because the language test I took for the Consular Fellows was actually harder than the speaking test I did for the IMS points, but we'll get to that later. So after I took the orals in January, they gave me my score and they said, you can get a higher score if you have veterans points or language points. And they said, oh wait, you're on another register. You're gonna be on the Consular Fellows Program register, right? And I said, yeah, well, I passed that one as well. So they said, oh, okay, so maybe the points will transfer. I emailed the language testing unit because I was thinking, maybe I can get the extra points without having to take the test again. By the way, they're very responsive. I think they got back to me at the same day or the next day. And they said, no, unfortunately, the score from the Consular Fellow does not transfer to IMS candidacy. Um, but congratulations, do you want to schedule a test? So I got a 5.6 for IMS, 6.1 for Consular Fellow, but I prefer the IMS because it's more job stability and things. I've heard that the IMS register clears out pretty fast, like, because they have a high need of IMS people, but I figured, okay, why not try to be more competitive? And so do a language test for the extra 0.17 to get a 5.77. That said, speaking of language points, you can do a second test in person after passing the speaking test for even more points but I'll get to that in a minute. And when you give your name, language to be tested in, date range, uh, starting two weeks from the date, two weeks from today, you, you need to schedule at least two weeks out. It gives some dates you're available. Did you pass the oral exam? Yes, no. I don't think you can even test if you haven't passed the oral exam. That's a weird question. When did you pass the FSOT? Are you currently on the register? Are you a current DOS employee? What state or country you will call from? what state or country you will call from to take the test. Um, please provide your state and time zone, okay? Because you have to take it in Eastern time because they're all on the East Coast. Please note tests will be scheduled between the hour 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, please also note that most languages test on a set day and time. Flexibility is limited since they only test once a week. Once FSI has received your language test request, it will be scheduled in accordance with the availability of a testing team near or on the date requested. And you will only be permitted to test in the same language once every six months. I gave them my name and info. Okay, then, this was interesting. So I said, okay, I'd like to test for Arabic. Please let us know if you want to test in Arabic MSA, Modern Standard, or other dialects. We want to make sure you get the right tester. And I was surprised by that, because I was like, wait a minute, you're letting me choose? Because like for the Consular Fellows Arabic test, it was Fosha, like modern standard. They didn't give me a choice at all. At least, or if they, maybe they did, though they did give me a choice, 
but it was in like Fusha anyway. I said, oh, I didn't know we had that option. Like I speak, you know, Saudi, I speak more Hijazi. So do you have like a tester for Khaliji? And they, and they said, yes. This is the thing that was weird. So the email talks about WebEx. I thought it was going to be a phone test, but video test is fine. But there was a PDF attached that's like the guide. Language proficiency testing, FSI. It says, speaking and reading tests take approximately one hour each. And then it's got this like, yeah, reading. And I'm like, wait, reading? I thought it was just speaking. So I called them. There was a phone number on the brochure and they were like, oh, no, no, this is the, the speaking test only. So the guide is just has, it's like for everything. I'm like, okay, whatever. So the guide has the information for the speaking and reading test, which is basically a test that if, say I passed it, if, so when I, when you pass, when you pass the first test, the phone test, and you want to get even more points, you can do an in-person test. I don't even know if it's still in person with COVID, but you can do a longer test that's speaking and reading for your language and get an extra like 0.25 or 0.38 bonus points, depending on your score. And I guess the deal is if you take those extra points, you have to do one of your first two tours in a post designated for that language, which is kind of weird because like I tested in Arab in Saudi. So that basically means like you would have to go to, I would have to, uh, I don't know how they do that. Cause like if I had taken the extra points in Arabic Saudi dialect in like uh, Western Saudi, what if there weren't any posts available and there weren't any jobs available in that post for my first two tours? Like would they send me to like another Arabic speaking country? But see like, that's not the same dialect. I don't know, getting into the details here. So the guide, they sent me the PDF, it's basically saying, yeah, so during, and this is what a guide for the, how it's going to go. During the speaking test, the tester interacts with you only in the language being tested. The testing team is only interested in your language proficiency. Points of view and opinions you express during the test will not affect your rating. Part one, social conversation. You will have a conversation with the tester on topics covering personal information, daily life experience, and if possible, more complex topics. Part two, work-related exchange. You will, it's called a work-related exchange. Okay. That was not the experience I had. You will give an explanation on a topic that you select from seven choices. Okay, maybe this is for the in-person test because this is not like what I did. Yeah, so that guide was not very helpful. I'm just gonna put it out there. So my test was March 22nd. So a few days, five days before I got a WebEx invitation and I got some administrative forms for my upcoming test. Like an admin form, you put your, your name, your info, language you're testing in and it felt kind of bad to be putting, you know, Arabic. FSI, okay, threshold language test. Here's the information that you want to hear about it. The first test, it's designed to provide you and your employee with information about your speaking ability in a foreign language. The test assesses whether or not your performance reaches a stated proficiency level, i.e. level two or level three, based on rating scales described in the Interagency Language Roundtable, ILR. Approximately 30 minutes, and it will be administered by phone or video conference at the discretion of the language testing unit, and will be recorded for quality control, the testing team consists of an examiner who administers the test and a tester who interacts with you in the language being tested exclusively. I feel like an examiner and a tester is kind of the same thing, but for this situation, it's different. So the tester is the person who's only speaking the language, whereas the examiner is the person speaking English to you. The languages assessed at the level two are Arabic, Chinese, Dar uh, Dari, Farsi, Hindi, Korean, Pashto, or Urdu. The rest of the languages are assessed at level three. All right, so Arabic is level two. So this basically means you don't have to do as well. All right, so for passing at level two, I'm gonna read you the, the instructions for the format for passing at level three because that's what they did to me. All right, for passing at level three, it consists of three parts. Number one, conversation up to seven minutes. After your brief intro, you will have a conversation with the tester on general and professional topics, i.e. social, political, and or economic issues. Explanation, part two. You will give an explanation on a topic selected by the testing team. There will be no preparation time except for a moment to collect your thoughts. How long is a moment? I don't know, one standard moment. It is to your advantage to present the topic in the form of extended and informative monologue that includes analysis and argumentation for or against certain points of view, rather than simple de description of the topic. The testing team may ask a follow-up question when necessary in order to get a better rateable sample. Part three, interview up to five minutes. You will ask the tester questions on a topic selected by the testing team and report to the examiner in English on what you heard. There'll be no prep time except for a moment for you, 
Again, a moment to collect your thoughts. It is to your advantage to elicit tester's opinion rather than simple facts. Throughout the test, it is to your advantage to move from basic info to speaking in the abstract. So as I said, Arabic's only assessed at level two, but they gave me the level three test. And I was fine with that, like whatever, like, you know, you just do your best anyway. So my test was about 10 days ago. It was a, like a Monday or a Tuesday morning. And what happened was like I logged in and there was a major issue with the sound. Like it just, you know that when there's that echo, it's not even echoey, it was like that high pitch thing where it's hurting your ears. I had to mute my mic and then I called in. There's a number you can call in from your phone. Very useful to know if there's a lot of echoey and if this audio is not good, because I could barely make out what they were saying. So I kept my video on so they could see me, but I had my phone right there. So they were hearing me talking to my phone and that was better because I could hear them better when I turned off my mic. Another thing, I know y'all are interested in this topic because I kind of lurk in the online forums, like Reddit and Discord and stuff. And like, I don't really post. I make videos to talk about my experiences and opinions. I'm not a big poster. I would rather just lurk and read. People ask a lot of questions about this language test and the oral assessment, including like, what's the dress code, okay? Like people say, oh, business casual, like a formal interview. And I'm like, personally, like just FYI on a side note, I wore a t-shirt for my tests, for my orals and for this, and I passed. So I don't think they really care about what you're wearing. As long as you're wearing clothes. Like if I, obviously if you were topless, it probably wouldn't be a good look. I mean, even if you're hot, it's probably not a good look as in <laughs> holistically for you. But yeah, by the way, those who do are posting on the online form, like thanks for the entertainment. Sometimes. I just, you know, yeah, when I'm bored, I'll like check in, see what people are saying about this stuff. It's very interesting. As I said, I had to call in. There was a, a woman about my age who was kind of the administrator. And then there was the examiner and the tester. The examiner was, I think he was one of the French teachers or French, in, French examiners. Um, he definitely had a French accent and he was, he was very, they were all very friendly. And there was a, a woman who was uh, Saudi. The administrator gets some more information about you and then you're ready to start. So it's just me, the tester and the examiner, and it is recorded. So you might, that's why maybe if it's recorded, maybe you do want to dress up. I, again, I just wore a t-shirt, so I don't know. Anyway, the examiner reads all the instructions. First part is like after a brief intro, after your brief intro, you will have a conversation with the tester on general topics. For me, like I'm very friendly and I could not wait to find out where the, the tester was from, like what part of Saudi and all this. And so I was, I talked a little bit about myself then I was like asking her questions, but then she kind of was like, kind of redirecting to more about me and which is the way it should be. But you know, I just, I, in general, I'm just very friendly. So I default to like, I want to know more about you and I want to learn about you. I can't really disclose obviously the exact questions that were asked. I don't even remember the exact questions, but it's, yeah, you have a convo with the tester and the examiner is kind of there waiting or timing it, I guess. The next part, you have to give like a presentation, as it says, give a uh, presentation or talk about a topic that they give you. And this was a topic that I know nothing about, not even in English, okay? Like I barely know anything about this topic that they gave me. So as you can imagine, it was a little nerve wracking, but I mean, I passed in the end. So anyway, but the first thing I said, I remember was like, that's basically what I said. Like, I don't know anything about this topic and I did my best. And then the third part, right. Oh, the third part was my favorite because it's like interpretation. So the examiner, was like, you're gonna to talk to the tester about X topic. Oh, and he said, and you're gonna also tell me what, what she's saying, so you're gonna interpret for me. And I said, okay, so is it just like gonna be one long thing and then, I, and then I relate to you the whole thing? Like, do I take notes on it or do I like, how does it work? He goes, oh, well, you're gonna to have to interrupt her because otherwise she'll keep talking and you won't have any time to talk to me. Cause you, like it's, you're being tested on interpreting from that language to English. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. And I hate to interrupt people cause I'm very polite. So that was also a little difficult for me. Um, cause I asked her the question in Arabic and then she's giving me lots of lots of information. And I had to be like, Afwan, Afwan, you know, like, please Afwan, like, uh, hold on. And then I explain to him in English what she's saying. And I said, okay, Kemali, like you can keep going. She's taught some more. And then I, and I stopped her again and I explained to him and she keeps going. And I said, yeah, it was like five minutes, but it went by like that. And that was kind of fun as well. And then, and that was it. So the whole test, yeah, it was about 30 minutes. They said they would give me the scores the next day. 
And I said, yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. The, the, the examiner was like, oh, I really enjoyed listening to hear, hearing your conversation. And I was like, oh, thank you. Like, that was really sweet. And the tester also was very kind as well. Like, they're both very nice people. So even though the beginning of it was kind of thrown off because the audio was bad, like, I was able to call in and, and it was fine. And then the next day, around 12 or 1 p.m., like, on the dot, I got an email with the language test results and I see the subject line come up in my Gmail and like my heart's like beating like, oh, you know, and the email that came was like a Rosetta Stone. I, I tried to, like, seriously, cause it's like, good afternoon, like including this email is a screen capture of your testing record, which includes the results from your recent Bex test. They're scored on a pass fail basis. There's no numerical score. And then there's like a key. So like S equals speaking test, P equals pass, F equals fail, R equals reading test, X equals not applicable. You scroll all the way down, he has your name, the agency, the language. And it's weird because it's Arabic, formal standard. My speaking test was not in standard, formal standard Arabic. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then the test date and then the result, it said SP. And I'm like scrolling back up. Wait, what's S? Oh yeah, speaking test, P, okay, pass. And then R, reading test, oh, X. Yeah, because not applicable because it, I didn't take that test. All right, guys, overall, what's my advice for this test? My advice is try to have discussions with friends who are native speakers. And I think if you can keep on talking about something, like if there's a word that you kind of stumble on, find another way around it, find another way to explain it. Don't like get stuck for like half a minute on something. And also if there's a topic that you don't know anything about, cause like I said, you cannot choose the topic. I asked and he's like, no, you have to talk about this topic. And I'm like, okay. You can say that you don't know anything about it. Maybe say why you don't know anything about it and say like, here's why I'm not interested in it. Here's what I think about this. What I do know about it is this and I don't like this. So yeah, it's like, it's okay if, if it's a topic you don't know anything about because you can still pass the test. I'm living proof of that. Having been asked a question I know nothing about even in English. So, uh, and for the interpretation, like I said, you have to be okay with interrupting the tester even if it feels rude. And what else? I think it's just, yeah, if you can have like a flowing conversation, then you don't really have much to worry about. Some people say like, oh, you should read current events. Maybe know some terms in case they ask you, but I don't think it really would have helped, at least not for mine. But then again, like if you're going into foreign service, I feel like you already kind of have a baseline knowledge of current events, or you maybe read at least the headlines of the news, so you know something. I mean, you don't want to be like living under a rock or like only watching like Netflix dramas, you know, like you want to have like a kind of a wider base of media that you consume uh, to be able to speak, to be able to have a better chance, I guess, at passing the test. But yeah, what else would I have to say? Oh, that's the ice machine. Sorry. In terms of, oh, being a phone test, I, I don't know if this test used to be done over the phone exclusively, but I will tell you, yeah, mine was done over video and it was recorded. And again, like I don't have a problem with that, but you might want to think about like if you were thinking of doing the test in your underwear on the phone, just be prepared to do it on video. I don't know if they let you take, turn off your camera. I didn't ask. So anyway, that's my advice. Uh, let me know your thoughts and questions and comments. And oh, in terms of next steps, well, when I get this monthly summary email from the registrar or whatever, it says like, okay, your clearance is pending. This is pending language tests pass. And then it said like veterans not applicable or something. So I think it, it was like a week or so later that, you know, the registrar had gotten word that I passed and it was already kind of like attached to my file at that point. So uh, now I have the extra 0.17 points, which brings me to a 5.77 for IMS. So fingers crossed that, um, Everything else will go smoothly. I'm filming this video like 10 days, yeah, 10 days after my test. I don't know when I'm gonna publish it, but hopefully when I do publish this video, the information is still valid and relevant for you. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Love you guys. Have a cool,